Hello everybody and welcome to my channel Jesus and Coffee Conversations. Thank you for joining me today. It is Sunday, February 26th and I am back with a brand new video for you guys. I am super excited about the videos that I am going to start doing on a weekly basis. These videos are specifically for women and young girls. Um, and I'm basically going to be talking about women in the Bible. I'm going to go over their character traits um, and kind of go deeper into uh, their character because as women of God, it's very important that we make sure that we have godly characteristics and that we have character traits that make us stand out, that um, allow people to recognize and notice that we are different. Um, and young girls today, they need good, strong, godly role models um, because they don't have really good role models in the world. I mean, when you have five-year-old little girls twerking and, you know, thinking it's cute to be moms at young ages and, you know, all those things, that just lets you know that it is time for women of God to stand up and start speaking out and start teaching them what the Bible says and how to carry themselves in a respectful manner um and i'm not saying you know that you have to be like holier than thou and just like a nun and all this stuff we, it's mainly to teach them that it, you can be born again and still have fun okay just because you're born again that does not mean that your life has to be boring and you don't have fun and you know you pray 10 times a day and all that stuff okay so i'm gonna be doing breaking all this stuff down in these videos um if you are a man and you're watching this that is fine because um, you might be dating and you might be interested in someone and so it kind of gives you insight into what to look what kind of character traits to look for specifically okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get started today's woman of the bible is going to be who everyone knows and that is the proverbs 31 woman and when i first started my youtube channel i did a video about her i want to say maybe um how long have I been doing YouTube? I think I've been doing YouTube five years ago. So I'll see if I can find it and then I'll have it pop up here if you wanna you know, watch that. Um, and I kind of went over her character traits in that video, but this video, I really think I'm gonna go deeper into it as I'm starting to uh, get more understanding about you know who she is and her character. Okay, so I have all of her character traits here and I am gonna read you know, Proverbs 31 starting at verse 10. And then, um, excuse me, and then I'm going to go into her character traits and talk about those, okay? So make sure you have your Bible so that you can follow along with me. I am reading the King James Version today. Um, and again, it's going to be Proverbs 31, verse 10. And I'm starting with her just because I feel like every woman today believes that they're the Proverbs 31 woman. And... I don't think people really break down her character traits. I think they just hear, oh, she was virtuous. And then they're just like, oh, okay, well, I'm virtuous. And they just run with it. And they don't break down all her other characteristics as well. Um, so that's why I'm starting with her, okay? So Proverbs 31, verse 2, 10, I'm sorry. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh rule in flats and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and pur purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. 
She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Okay, so now we're going to get into her character traits, okay? Now, reading this, we see that the Proverbs 31 woman had it going on, okay? She had a lot of character traits that are admirable and that a lot of women aspire to have. Um, you know, long story short, the Proverbs 31 woman was and is a boss, okay? She really is out here doing it, okay? So here's the trait number one that I want to talk about is she is trustworthy. She is a trustworthy woman, okay? Um, and I don't think people really understand like how crucial being trustworthy is, okay? Now for me, once I no longer trust you, I can no longer deal with you. We can't be friends. We can't, you know, if we're dating or whatever, it's over. Once I stop trusting you, it's a wrap for me. Because if I can't trust you, then I'm constantly going to be worried. I'm constantly going to be stressed out. I'm constantly going to be, you know, dissecting everything you say and do. I'm constantly going to be, you know, you out here, like, trying to call you, track you down, all this stuff. That is not how anybody should be living, okay? Um, and so when I say she's trustworthy, her husband can trust her. Her children can trust her. Everyone who deals with her can trust her. So she's not out here, you know, betraying people's trust. If she says she's gonna do something, she follows through. If she's unable to follow through, then she'll, you know, go and say, hey, look, you know, I know I said that I wasn't gonna be able to do this. Something came up. I'm not gonna be able to do what I said this time, you know, um, but I will definitely, you know, make sure that I come through next time, right? Um, because I trust what because it's one thing for you to tell somebody you're gonna do something and then it turns out that you can't do it and you don't tell them that you can't do it. Then they're like, Well, you said you're gonna do XYZ and you didn't do it. So and you didn't tell me why you didn't, you know, weren't able to come through on what you said. And so that makes people not trust you. Okay, so she was definitely somebody that her husband trusted, her children trusted, those who work for her trusted her. People she dealt with trusted her. Um, so that is a very important character trait to have. You want to be someone that people can trust. She's not out here running around telling people's business. So if somebody comes to her in confidentiality, she's not going behind their back and telling her best friend or telling her husband or telling other people. She keeps people's secrets, unless it's something like it's life or death. Now, if it's a life or death, then that's different. Yes, you need to let other people know. But if, if somebody is confiding in you and it's not a life or death situation, then it's important that you don't betray their trust, okay? So that's care to trait number one. Care to trait number two, and I need to write these numbers down so I don't get messed up. Number two, she was a helper. So it was, it was not all about her. She wasn't just like, okay, what you gonna do for me, 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 me. She was a helper. She helped others. That is something else that is super important to make sure that is part of your character, okay? You want to be someone that does not mind helping others if you're able to do so. Now, I know sometimes people might need, you know, like money. If you are unable to help them out at that time, okay, that's understandable, right? So if anytime that you're able to help other people, you want to make sure that you help them. It can't be everybody's always helping you, everybody's always pouring into you, and you're just taking, 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 taking. And there's a lot of people that are takers instead of givers. There's a lot of people out here that always need help, but they refuse to help others. So when people need your help, it's important that you say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna help you. Just like if somebody, you know, is in a uh, business and they need help you know, getting started up and stuff like that. So they need a mentor. 
right? They need somebody who was where they were and now they're, they were able to build up. So now they're reaching back to help others get to where they are, okay? There's a lot of people that once they make it, they don't wanna tell you how they got there because they, they're scared that you're gonna take their spot and start outdoing them. But the Proverbs 31 woman was a helper. She's like, look, I have no problem showing you and telling you what I did to get where I am, okay? Um, Karis is trait number three. She was hard working, not lazy, okay? And that is in verse, where it talks about she's not idle. I don't see it right off the gate. But she was not lazy. She was a hard worker. She got up at the crack of dawn. So even before the sun is up or out, she's up already working. So, and that's early in the morning. Like, I have to get up at 530 every morning. It is still dark outside. So I'm up and I'm already getting my day started, okay? There's only 24 hours in a day that God has blessed us with. A lot can get done in those 24 hours if we are conscious with our time and and we are serious about our time, right? So I was listening to somebody and he was saying the way you maximize your 24 hours is you need to write down a, a list. So account for every hour. So you might say, okay, 5.30 to 6 o'clock, time with God. 6 o'clock to 6.30, I'm doing this. 6.30 to 7.30, I'm doing this. So you're, every hour you're writing down what it is that you have to do. So that way you're making sure that you are doing everything that you need to get done. So you're eating breakfast, you're working out, you're going to work, you're taking care of your children if you have them. Um, you're working your business if you have a business. Uh, you have time you know, for your family, have time for your friends. So every hour is accounted for. You have to do that if you want to make sure that you are not just, I can't tell you how many times, like the day comes and then the next thing I know is nine o'clock at night and I'm like, what did I do today? It's like the times got away from me and I can't tell you hardly anything I did because I didn't write it down. So you have to, you have to be intentional and you have to make sure that you are hardworking. So not being lazy, she won't sit in there watching, you know, five hours worth of television. She wasn't laying in the bed and you know just scrolling social media she wasn't at her girlfriend's house you know just sitting there gossiping talking about other people she was working she was about her business she made sure she woke up she cooked her breakfast she made sure you know that she delegated uh responsibilities to those who worked for her she's out in the vineyard looking and seeing buying a vineyard and then working the vineyard, planting, you know, the stuff that needs to be planted. She was out there buying, you know, the stuff that she needed for the clothing and, you know, all these other things. So she was out there working and she, you know, wasn't lazy about it. So now here's the thing. It's okay for me personally. I have at least one lazy day every week. Either it's a Saturday or it's a Sunday where I completely say, okay, you know what? I'm not doing anything today. Because that is my day to rest. That is my day to recharge myself. That is my day to just take time for me. Because as a woman, we have a lot to do and a lot on our plate. And a lot of times we put ourselves on the back burner. We find ourselves constantly tired. We find ourselves, you know, just running, 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 like going and going and going and going like with an energizer buddy. We're taking care of everybody else and everything else, but we always neglect ourselves. And you cannot be any good to anyone else if you are not taking care of yourself, okay? So I allow myself one lazy day a week where I do nothing, where I'm like, don't call me, ask me if I wanna go anywhere, do anything, the answer is gonna be no. I am recharging, I'm resting, I might sleep in, I'm doing my facials, I'm spending more time with God, I am, you know, watching the movies I wanna watch, I am, you know, might be cleaning up. I might just be whatever it is that I want to do, but I do not leave my house. <laughs> okay, that is the day that I stay home and I'm like, I am not going anywhere. And this is the day that I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay, so if you have a lazy day like that once a week, that's not what I'm talking about. But for those who just always like for the most part, you're lazy, like you don't want to do anything. You don't want to work hardly. 
That is not a true Proverbs 31 woman, okay? You have to be hardworking and about your business. All right, number four, she was independent. So she was not dependent on her husband to take care of her, provide for her. Her husband had his career and she had her own thing going on. She had businesses. So she was independent. She went to the vineyard by herself and said, okay, you know what? This is, I, this is what I want. I want that. She went to go get the clothing material for herself and was in there just picking up. Okay, let me get this. Let me get this. And I'll take that over there. And then this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to make. She wasn't sitting around waiting for, you know, her husband to say, okay, like, here's this amount of money for the day. Go do this. Or here's, you know, anyway, y'all get what I'm saying. She was independent. Okay. Now she was not too independent to the point where she was like, I don't need you. Like, like she needed, she knew she needed her husband. There's a lot of women now that have, oh, I'm independent. I don't need no man. I can do this all, my, all on my own. Honey, you won't, you are not created to do these, these things and life on your own. You are created to be a helpmate. And the independent woman attitude turns a lot of men off and a lot of men away, especially if they're a true man of God. God created men and women to come together in marriage to be a partnership. Men were not created to be alone and women were not created to be alone. But what society has done, they've came in with themselves, independent women, Back in the day, I, that was my jam, singing, all the women, we independent. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Being an independent woman does not mean that you are like, I don't need you. I can do everything on my own. That's not truly what you're supposed to be doing, okay? Now, it's independent in the sense of you're not always relying on someone else to do something for you. You're able to do things on your own. Like Proverbs 31 was able and capable of buying her own vineyard. She was able and capable of buying the materials that she needed to design her dresses or whatever that she was making. She was independent to where she's able to delegate tasks to her servants and she's able to cook breakfast and things for her family. So she's independent in the sense of she didn't need to rely on her husband because she had her own thing going on. But she wasn't so independent that she was pushing him away and saying, I can do this all myself, I don't, all, my, all on my own, I don't need you. Okay, so that's a very thin line that you want to be extra careful with. You don't want to be so dependent that you look down on every man and you're like, I don't need you for nothing. But you want to be independent enough to where it's like, I have my own business, I run my own show, but I can also submit when I need to, okay? And that's a word I know people <laughs> don't like, but that's that's how it is, that's the truth, okay? Number five, she was a planner. So it says she got up early and she's planning out her, her list to do for the day. So just like how I just said that every hour of the day needs to be accounted for, that's what she was doing. So she's up early and she's look, thinking about all the things that she has to get done that day. And she's writing down all the things that she needs to get done that day. She's writing down all the things that she needs to get done that week. She's writing down all the things she needs to get done that month. So if, if she had children, right? So in society today, if you have children, your children probably play basketball, football, ball, they're in ballet, they play soccer. They might be in gymnastics. They might be uh, getting tutored. They might, your children have their own little busy schedules, right? And so you write down everything that your child has to do for that week and that month. So the Proverbs 31 woman is a planner. So it is very important that you take the time to sit and say, okay, let me write down all the things that I have going on. Let me write down all my goals. Let me write down how I'm gonna achieve my goals. Let me write down how I'm gonna achieve all the things that I have to get done, okay? So a planner, and you're thinking ahead and saying, okay, you know, I have this coming down the road. This is what I need to do today to meet that goal down the road, okay? So make sure that you are planning 
you're writing it down. Number six, she was an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, okay? And I kind of already talked about that a little bit. So she had her own thing going on. She was an entrepreneur, right? A businesswoman. Society today, we have a lot of women that are entrepreneurs. We have a lot of women that are now, you know, multimillionaires and they are, you know, killing it. And so that's what a proper story one woman is and was. Somebody who is business-minded and is successful at their business, okay? Number seven, she was full of energy. So she's getting up at the crack of dawn. She has all these things that she has to get done. She's a mom, she's a wife. That all is draining and exhausting, but she was full of energy. Meaning, like me right now, you know, like I'm tired, but I am still like pumped up and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm talking to you guys. So she had energy, right? So this is why it's important to take care of yourself. This is why it's important that you eat right. And I'm speaking to myself too. <laughs> this is why it's important to eat right. This is why it's important to exercise. This is why it's important to make sure that you're getting your eight hours of sleep a night. This is why it's important to make sure you're drinking plenty of water. This is why it's important that you take time for yourself to rest and recharge. This is why self-care is so important so that you can have the energy to do the things that need to get done. If you are running yourself into the ground, you don't have the energy. A lot of women are, have died and are dying early deaths because they did not take the time to take care of themselves. You need to take your vitamins, especially like if you're tired all the time, you need to make sure your iron is good and you need to make sure you're taking like your B12 vitamins and all that stuff, right? So that you have the energy to get all the things done that need to be done. And she could have been tired, but she was not going around constantly professing, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, because your words have power. So if you're constantly saying, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, then guess what? Your body is going to start reacting and your body is going to be tired. And you're gonna be tired all the time so you have to be mindful with your words and start saying I am full of life I am full of energy thank you Lord for giving me the energy that I need to get the things that need to be done today done okay so she was full of energy number eight she was a good steward so she wasn't out there just spending the money and spending it like crazy just because she had it she was a good steward over her finances that is a very important godly trait to have. You want to be a good steward over everything that God has blessed you with so that he can bless you with more. If you can't be trusted with a little bit that you have, he's not going to bless you with more. So she was a good steward. So she was like, okay, you know what? I want this vineyard. And she did her research on the vineyard to make sure that it was going to be fruitful that it was going to work for her she didn't just go out and get the first vineyard that she came across she didn't just go out and get the first you know uh type of material to make you know her dresses and stuff with she didn't just go out and get the first thing so she did her research on the stuff to make sure that it was good quality and that she was going to get a return on her investment so you have to be a good steward over your finances and I am also speaking to myself in this area you can't just be out here doing whatever whenever just because you have the money and that's where her being a planner also comes down the line as well because if you are being a planner then you're gonna be a good steward of your finances because you're looking at your budget and you're planning your budget you're planning the things that you're gonna have to spend money on Okay, so you want to make sure that you are being a good steward over what God has given you. If you have an apartment and you one day want to get a house, if you don't take care of your apartment like it's a house, then you're not going to take care of your house when you get it. If you want a car like a Lexus, but you don't take good care of your Honda, you're not going to take good care of your Lexus. And God's not going to bless you with more if you can't even take care of the little bit that he gave you. Okay? So make sure that you are being a good steward. Number nine, she was generous. 
Now, the Bible talk, talks a lot about helping the poor, helping the needy, and helping those, you know, that are less fortunate than you. So she was generous. She, you know, and it doesn't always necessarily have to be money. You can be generous with your time. You can be generous with your wisdom. You could be generous with, you know, if you have the finances. You could be generous, you know, by, you know, helping, volunteering, okay? So she was a generous woman. And the Bible tells us to give and it shall be given unto us. And so you should have the mindset of, okay, I'm going to give to this homeless person just so I can get something back. You want to be generous and say, you know what, because I have it and somebody helped me and God blessed me, I'm going to be a blessing to somebody else. Right? It could be as simple as, you know, you are getting your food at the drive thru and you decide to pay for the person behind you and say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for the person behind me or I'm gonna pay for the next two people behind me. So that's being generous. So you a person with a true godly character is a giver. God is a giver. Jesus was a giver. So you have to be willing to be generous to others as well. Number 10, she was respectable and respectful. So this one is a big one, okay? She was respectable towards her husband. She wasn't cussing her husband out. She wasn't out here um, embarrassing her husband. So a lot of women today, like she, I'm gonna talk about clothing for a minute. You are not showing respect to your husband if you're married. You, and even if you're not married yourself, you're not showing respect to yourself or your husband if you are walking around with your breasts hanging out. You're not showing respect to yourself or your husband if you are wearing booty shorts to where your cheeks are hanging out. You're not showing respect to your husband or yourself if you out here twerking and posting it on social media. You're not showing respect to your husband and yourself if you out here taking booty shots, booty pictures. Okay? The Proverbs 31 woman carried herself with respect because she understood that she's not just representing herself. First of all, she's representing God. And secondly, she's representing her husband. This is why it says that her husband was respected in the gate. So her husband was a man of importance. And people respected him. And because his wife carried herself in a respectful manner, that made people respect her husband even more. She was respectful. So she wasn't out here, like I said, she wasn't out here cussing her husband out. She wasn't out here just, you know, knocking her kids all upside the head. She wasn't out here cursing people out. She wasn't out here, you know, uh dressing in revealing clothing and twerking all over the place and and smoking and like a chimney and you know just acting in an unclassy manner okay the proverbs 31 woman carried herself in a way that demanded respect and in a way that she respected others and I know it's a touchy subject because people want to be like, oh, well, you know, you're judging people. No, it's not about judging people. And actually, that's what people do. When people look at you, your first impression is your lasting impression. So if you meet a man and you have all your breasts hanging out, leaving nothing to the imagination, basically you walking around wearing a napkin. The man is going to automatically assume, okay, she's easy. I can get exactly what I want and throw her to the side and go about my business and find a woman who's going to respect herself. You cannot represent God. You ultimately got to think about when you wear what you wear, you're not just representing yourself. You're representing God. If you're claiming to be a Christian, but you are... Now, if you're at the beach and you're having a bathing suit bikini or something, I'm not talking about that. But if you are on a regular hot summer day and just out here walking around in a bikini no beach in sight no pool in sight just walking down the street or whatever going to your car that's not representing god so you have to remember okay what i'm wearing is this going to glorify god is this respecting myself you can't demand respect 
but then wear things and act in a manner that's not worthy of respect, okay? Number 11, and I'm almost done, she was wise. She had wisdom. She knew when to do things, when not to do things, when to speak, when not to speak. She was getting her wisdom from God. You have to spend time in the presence of God to gain that wisdom. You have to ask God to bless you with wisdom. He said, if you ask him for wisdom, he is going to give it to you. So you have to be wise in knowing how to handle certain situations, how to handle certain people, what decisions to make, um, what business opportunities to take. You want to make sure that you are using wisdom across the board in every area. She wasn't out here just making random decisions and just going with the flow. She was using wisdom and saying, okay, let me be wise about what I'm about to do and make sure that it's in alignment with what I'm supposed to be doing, okay? And then the last one, number 12, I think it's, no, not the last one, y'all got two more, sorry. I had to flip this over. All right, <laughs> uh, she was kind. So she was not out here being mean and cussing people out and calling people stupid and just, you know, tearing people down with her words. A woman of God is kind. Now, you can be someone who doesn't take any mess. Like for me personally, I don't take mess. I'm kind, I'm nice, but don't try me. So I'm from the South and I will put that sun and bell charm on and read you from left to right. So you wanna make sure that you are kind to people. Just because, you know, and this is when it comes to people who live different lifestyles than you do. You know, even though I don't agree with somebody else's lifestyle, I'm still kind to them. I still respect them. You know, I don't um, turn my nose up at people or anything like that. I'm just, I'm a kind person, right? Um, and people think that I'm weak because I'm kind. And it's like, no, they quickly find out she's not weak. I'm not weak just because I'm kind. So a woman of God is kind. She's not mean to her husband just because, you know, he's getting on her nerves. She's not mean to, you know, people just because, you know, they are lacking common sense at the moment. <laughs> right? So she's a kind person. Um, so you want to make sure that you are being kind because that is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So if you claim to know God one of the fruits of the spirit is for you to be gentle and kind to people okay uh number 13 she is god fearing so she was someone who had a true relationship with god a proverbs 31 woman has a real relationship with god okay she reads her bible she prays she fasts she gets in his presence she um listens to him um she might not get it right all the time because we're human but for the most part, she has a reverence or a healthy fear of God. So she's not out here playing around with God. She's not out here, you know, claiming to have a relationship with him. But then behind, you know, closed doors, she cuts people out and knocking them upside the head and all this other stuff. Okay. So she understands that, you know, she needs God. You can't do anything in this life without God. So she understood and understands that she needs God, she needs that relationship with him. And she seeks God and she waits on God and she's led by God, okay? Now the last one, <laughs> number 14, she is a multitasker. So she had all these things going on, but she was able to handle them well. She was able to do multiple things you know, maybe not at the same time, something she probably could do at the same time, but she was good at multitasking. So she, you know, one minute she's minding the vineyard, the next minute she's over here buying this, next minute she's over here doing this for her family, next minute she's over here doing this, you know, for her business, next thing you know, she's over here doing this for her servant women. So she was a multitasker and was able to handle it all. That is why she was a planner, because if you plan well, you're able to juggle everything with balance, okay? Um... So yeah, that was all 14 character traits. I hope you guys got something out of it. 
Um, I am, like I said, I'm going to do these videos on a weekly basis. Um, and so the next one up is Ruth. So if you want to go ahead and get a head start on reading about Ruth, um, then you can do that. But I am going to be talking about her next. And I hope you guys, like I said, got something out of this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, all of those great things. Um, follow me on Instagram. I will have that in the description box. Guys, I have officially launched my Jesus Ink Coffee Jewels Jewelry line, which is what I am wearing right now. Um, so I will have that in the description box so you can go to my website. All pieces are $5. So like this set right here with the necklace and matching earrings, only $5. Um, I do have other pieces and things that are like $25, um, but y'all, it's good quality. Like this jewelry lasts a long time. Um, and so yeah, I'll have that in the description box below for you as well, along with my new Instagram business page and my new Facebook business page. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys support me. I would truly appreciate it. And I don't think I have anything else to say. So anyway, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great rest of your weekend. And have a great work week. And I will see you guys next time. God bless.